Good morning. I am excited. Today is the Sunday before Christmas, uh, a very exciting time for all of us, uh, probably a very busy time for all of us as well. Um, I want you to know we we did get the heat fixed at the uh, in the sanctuary last week. We had to meet in the fellowship hall, and that was pretty interesting. I'm telling you the truth. But we are um, back in the sanctuary tomorrow, and we're grateful for that. And also, let me just kind of remind everyone that uh, communion, uh, Christmas Eve communion, will be on Christmas Eve night. Uh, I believe it's from 5:30 to 7. Uh, you are more than welcome to come and participate in communion as a family. Uh, we are excited about it and the possibilities. And again, uh, I am excited that we are this close to Christmas and time is getting near. I want to read from the book of Luke again. And it's the second chapter of Luke, beginning with the 21st verse. And it's a little different from what we normally would hear uh, during the Christmas time. And at the end of the eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called the holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout and waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came, and he came in the spirit into the temple. And when he, and when he, the parents rather, brought uh, in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he, Simeon, took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, "Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, and you have prepared the in the presence of all peoples." and the light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and the rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is oppressed and opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. Amen and amen. Now, we don't normally hear uh, that particular story at Christmas time. We, read, we normally read about the shepherds, and we normally read about Bethlehem, or we normally read about the wise man and the birth of the baby and the angels singing and all the things that goes along with Christmas. This is not exactly a Christmas story. It's not exactly the story you would expect to have read on the Sunday before Christmas itself. It doesn't touch on all the different things that we normally talk about. The story does, though, involve Mary and Joseph. It also involves a baby named Jesus. Only now, they're not in Bethlehem. They're in Jerusalem. And they're going into the temple, and they're going into the temple for a purpose. It was a time for the purification ritual, not for the baby, but for Mary. You see, according to Jewish law, at a certain time after the woman's had a baby, she has to go into the temple for a purification sacrifice. And in conjunction with that, they also brought Jesus, as the scripture says, to present him to the Lord. Now, I hope that we can appreciate the humor in that whole idea. When you think about it, this is like the Lord presenting the Lord to God. Or this is like the Lord pre to presenting himself to the Lord. But that was tradition. It was tradition for Mary and Joseph. They were good Jews. They were going to do what the law said, and they wanted to keep the law. But in the story... 
And there's an old man by the name of Simeon. And for a long time, I thought Simeon was a priest or I thought that Simeon was a prophet. But in truth, Simeon was neither. He was, as scripture puts it, he was a righteous and devout Jew who, who like so many others, he was waiting for what they called the consolation of Israel. He was looking for the Messiah, the one who had been promised to the Jews hundreds and hundreds of years before. And then it says in the scripture, the spirit was upon him. The spirit was upon him. Makes you, makes you wonder if the Holy Spirit had, had been upon him the whole time. Was the Holy Spirit in Simeon the, Simeon the whole time? Or did it just maybe descend at that moment uh, that he saw Jesus? Truth of the matter is, in my thinking anyway, Simeon had walked with and Simeon had been with the Holy Spirit his whole life. He walked his whole life with the Holy Spirit. Now, why do I think that? Because this is not the first time. This is not the first time that Simeon had been told something by the Holy Spirit. It says that the Holy Spirit revealed to Simeon that he would not die. He would not die until he first saw the Messiah. Now, as I'm beginning to get older, I'm beginning to realize more and more there are so many things that I have not seen. There are so many things that, that if I live long enough, I might see, but chances are real good I may not. Many things I would love to see. And there's so many things I want to do, but I've never been told by God that you will live long enough to do these things. But Simeon was. Simeon knew in his heart, Simeon knew in his mind that he would live long enough to see Jesus. He had that assurance from the Holy Spirit. And the scripture says that on that day, he was moved by the Spirit to go to the temple where he saw the baby Jesus, and he took him into his arms. Now, I want you to think about that for just a second. It says that Simeon took him into his arms. Now, nowadays, at least in our particular uh, culture and the way we live nowadays, uh, people, if somebody took your baby out of your arms, you start screaming and hollering and calling the police. But as soon as Simeon saw the baby, he took the baby out of Mary's arms. And I love what he did. He started singing. Wow. So that brings me to a question. Have you ever ridden a city bus in Louisville, Kentucky? It happens something like this. You sit on this little bench beside a sign, well, it used to be a sign, that says, this is where you wait. You sit there on that bench and you wait. And you stand up every now and then and you look down the street and you look down that way of the street and you sit back down and you wait. You're always watching, never taking your eyes off the road. And you do that because you don't want to miss what you've been waiting for. Now, I can imagine Simeon watching and waiting. Why? Because once again, he knew there was no doubt, no doubt in his mind whatsoever that the Messiah was coming. But he also knew that the Messiah meant salvation was coming. Simeon only caught a glimpse of what was to come. Let me say that again. Simeon only caught a glimpse of what was to come. You and I today have a different perspective we have a different perspective from what Simeon had. Simeon saw a small boy who would bring salvation. You and I today are able to look back at a baby who would grow up and spend three years in ministry. He would spend three years teaching and healing. And you and I look back to see a Messiah. We look back through an empty tomb to a cross. Simeon looked at Jesus with physical eyes and he broke out his song. He said, Sovereign Lord, Simeon knew well who he served. He, in this process, Simeon acknowledged that God had promised him that he would not die until he had laid his eyes on the Savior. 
And again, I want to reiterate, Simeon had waited and waited, and now he's old. I'm not a patient man. Patricia will tell you that. I do not wait well. Simeon, on the other hand, had what I consider to be the spiritual gift of waiting. In Luke 2, he's waiting. He's waiting, and finally the end had come. By seeing the, the Messiah child, he knew that his waiting was over. He knew that his promise was fulfilled. And now it's kind of interesting. I love the way he does this. Simeon tells God what he needs to do next. He says, now you can dismiss your servant in peace. It's like Simeon was saying to God, now you can let me die. Now you can let me die and I will be happy. Simeon was ready. Simeon was ready to die because he had seen Jesus. That's part of the song. It is a, a praise for the fulfillment of God's promise. And, 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 and then and now he said, I am now ready to go home. Can you imagine saying those words? I have seen the Lord. Now take me home. This proved Simeon's commitment to wait. And now his fulfillment was done. His expectations had been met. What's interesting, or the interesting part of this, is what Simeon said and what he didn't say. Simeon, when he took that baby in his arms, he did not say, oh, what a cute little baby. That's our initial reaction when we see babies in somebody's arms. We say, oh, what a cute little baby. That, that's not what Simeon said. Why? Because Simeon saw what he'd been promised he would see. My eyes, this is what Simeon says, my eyes have seen your salvation. Simeon's song speaks to all people everywhere and at all time. Simeon leaves no error for doubt and no misunderstanding about who sent Jesus. He knew that God had sent Jesus. And this was, this was quite a shift from Jewish thinking. The Jewish people thought the Messiah would come only to and for the Jews. But Jesus' offer of salvation would not only be for the Jews, not only did Jesus come to restore the glory to Israel, but Simeon, through the Holy Spirit, had seen the bigger picture. The Messiah, he says, would be a light and a revelation for, and I love this, the Gentiles, you and me. Simeon had not heard the angels singing their song, I bring you good news of great joy to all people. But Simeon knew. He knew through the Holy Spirit. He knew through the Holy Spirit that, that this Christ child, this baby, this Messiah was bringing salvation not only to the Jews, but the Gentiles alike. He was bringing salvation to the whole world. Then after the song, Simeon pulled Mary aside and he speaks to her privately. You can kind of see him moving away from Joseph and giving the baby back to her. And this, what he told Mary was prophetic and heartbreaking for this young mother. The other news that Simeon gave was aimed at the truth that would come to pass. He said, this child you hold in your arms has come for a reason. This, song, this child you carry in your arms is here for a task. And some will follow him, and some will not. And in the end, this baby will be opposed, and what happens to him will pierce your heart and your soul like a sword. We know from this perspective that that prophecy came true years later. As Mary watched her son suffer and die on a cross. Yes, Simeon was an old man. But he lived long enough to see Jesus just as God had promised him. Simeon then sang a song to, about this beautiful baby who one day would become the Christ who would live and die on the cross. 
You see, God had prepared Simeon to, to see and to recognize the Messiah, even though it was still just a small baby. And God has prepared our hearts to recognize Jesus too. The baby in a manger, his one and only son. And the scripture shows us over and over confirmation that Jesus is the son of God, the promised Messiah of the whole world, the savior of all, who would bring salvation to all who believe in him. The question is this. Have you, like Simeon, recognized Jesus? Is he in your heart? Have you made him Savior? Amen. Father, thank you for allowing us this, this time to listen to your word. As you speak about the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, as we celebrate, we also, like Simeon, recognize the truth that that baby would become a man who would teach and love and share and also would die on a cross for us, but be, would be raised again from the dead. An empty tomb stands reminding us that Jesus Christ is alive. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that spoke to Simeon and the same Holy Spirit that speaks to us today. Help us to prepare our hearts even more for what's about to happen this week and the Christmas celebration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.